welcome back to the channel. Now today is not going to be a build video, it's actually going to be a discussion about my longboard, how I built it, the costs and generally just a bit more about it. And I'll also show some clips of me riding it. Let's get going with the video. So first off I thought I would talk about the dimensions of the longboard. So the length of the longboard in inches is 40 inches, which is quite a standard longboard size, and it's by 8.75 inches. So that's the general measurements of the board. Obviously it's a pintail shape, like so. So it's not going to be exactly the same, um, same measurements across the whole length of the board. Obviously some bits are narrower than the other bits. That's the whole design of the board. But I'm really happy with the shape. The shape was a custom design by myself, which was sketched out on paper and then cut onto here. So I'll show you the template and show how I got all this worked out. So here is my template that I used to make the board from. It's now rather bashed up and bruised and that's because it's been sitting in a drawer so that when I film this video I still have the template to show you. And to be honest I think I'm going to end up folding this up neater and keeping hold of this because I really really like the shape of this board and I found it really comfortable to ride and I think the template works really well. So all I did was got loads of pieces of A4 paper, stuck them together, so I think there's about six or seven pieces in this, maybe, yeah, six or seven pieces of paper in this, and then I stuck them together, and then I folded the paper in half, so it was like that, folded in half, then I sketched a curve that I was happy with, and it took me quite a few attempts, I'd say I probably spent about an hour designing the shape and getting something that I thought would look good. And I did a lot of research online looking up longboard shapes, I looked up pintail shapes, I looked up other longboard shapes, but this was the design that I liked and I felt a pintail shape would be best for the board. So that's why I ended up going with this. It's a pretty simple design, there's no specialist curves or anything like that. It's a simple design but something that I feel was comfortable to ride and beginner friendly. So yeah, that's the template, simple as that. So after I made the template I then moved on to actually cutting out the board. Again, that's a fairly simple thing to do but I'd already glued up the board by this point and sanded it flat, so it was literally cutting it out, screwing the wheels onto it, putting some grip tape on, and then riding it. So the board itself has really nice clear grip tape on it. As you can see, you can still see the wood through it. It's a little bit muddy at the moment, but I have ridden it an awful lot, so I'm not really surprised. And then we've got the cherry and sapili on here. So a little bit about the woods that I used. So I decided, to, after a lot of research, to use cherry, for the edges of the board and Sapili for the centre. Now I did look at other woods such as oak, ash, beech, poplar, poplar is really soft though so I thought that would be a terrible idea in the end, and walnut and things like that. But I wanted something a little bit different and more to my taste so I particularly like Sapili, it's one of my favourite hardwoods. And so I wanted to include Sapili somewhere in the board and then I've also liked working with cherry and it was what I made my first ever bowl out of so I thought it would be quite a nice connection if I made my first ever longboard out of cherry and in my favourite wood, Sapili. But of course any woods will work for a longboard but this is what I chose. Clearly you don't want something super soft but Sapili and cherry are really really nice woods to use. Easy to work, cut really nicely, sand really nicely and shape really nicely. But yeah, I'm really happy with the wood choice. I don't regret it in the slightest. I think the woods look really really nice. They've had a coat of cellulose sanding sealer and about five, six coats of satin lacquer. Um, from Chestnut Products, and then one gloss lacquer coat over the top of that. There are a couple of patches that you might be able to see where I put a little bit too much, and I should have knocked them back a little bit more. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the finish, and it's held up to quite a lot of abuse because I took it on the beach, um, onto like a beach path, and it had quite a few rocks that flicked up onto the bottom of the board, and there's only one or two very small scratches, so at the moment it's held up pretty well, and I would suspect I've probably done about five miles of total riding on the board which for someone who's never done any longboarding or skating with I'm pretty happy and so far I've fallen off once I'll show that clip now sorry for all the blurring here but I was trying to remove people in the background as I didn't think they would want to be in it as you can see it was a little bit of a silly accident there probably shouldn't have gone on a skate park without knowing what to do I've done it on scooters and things before but not <laughs> with a longboard so all in all though, it's fine, my wrist is fine, and I'm fine, but it wasn't the cleverest thing I've ever done. But back onto the longboard. So the grip tape was then purchased online as well. I'll leave a link to where I got the grip tape from. Really happy with it, it sticks really nicely, and it wasn't too expensive. I think the grip tape itself was about £8, and delivery was about £2, something like that. I think it ended up costing me between 
9 and 11 pounds, I can't remember the exact figure, but really happy with it and I'm so happy I decided to go for clear grip tape rather than black or something that hides or hid the wood grain because the whole point in making it out of nice wood is that you can see it on both sides and I don't regret going for the clear grip tape in the slightest. Now onto the trucks, so these were just purchased off Amazon, they're fairly cheap as longboard trucks go, I think they're about £40 which wasn't cheap for me but for longboard trucks that seems pretty cheap. So they're made by a company called Punte which is P-U-E-N-T-E, -P -E. they're just some ones I found on Amazon that got some good reviews and the bearings feel really smooth, they spin nicely and they've got lots of adjustability in the turning with this bushing, the red bushing up here. I haven't played around too much with the setup of the board yet, but it feels like you can tune it quite a lot and I'm really happy with the trucks. And just by coincidence, they happen to be the exact same um, width as the Sapili strip, which I promise you was not deliberate, as I thought I was going to have to make a separate template to mark out the location of the trucks. And when the trucks arrived, I put them on the board and I realised they were the exact same dimension as the central strip. Now, my advice would be if you're making a long board, if you're going to make it out of hardwood or three strips of wood or however many strips of wood, get your central strip to be the same width as your truck base. I didn't choose to do it deliberately, but actually it made it so much easier for lining up as all I had to do was make sure it was straight in this orientation rather than in this orientation and this orientation. It was much, much easier having it the same width as the central strip. Again, it wasn't deliberate, but I would definitely recommend it if you're going to build yourself a longboard. So in terms of the construction and materials used for the board, that's about it. If you do have any questions about anything about specifics of it, so how I built it, anything more, there is a video on me building a longboard, which again, I'll link down below. But I'm going to show you a few clips of me riding it now, so I hope you enjoy these clips of me riding the longboard, and I hope you enjoyed the clip of me falling off it. <laughs> Now onto the cost of building this longboard. Lots of you have asked me to do a video about the longboard and costs associated with it, why I chose to use specific materials and things. So for those of you who asked, this is the video that you've been asking for. So the cost of building the board. The trucks were about £40. The wood, I had custom machined to specific widths already and specific thickness to make my life much easier. And I think that was about £25, maybe £30. I can't remember the exact prices. I'll have to have a look, um, see if I can find my old receipts and things for it. So yeah, the trucks were about £40, the wood was about £25, and the grip tape was about £10. So all in all, it didn't cost me a fortune relative to buying a longboard, but it's not that much cheaper to build one as opposed to buying one. But my advice would be, if you're interested in making or even buying a longboard, definitely make it yourself. It's a lot more fun, you learn a lot more, and you can custom design it to fit yourself. So I'm definitely happy that I chose to build rather than buy. And obviously I'm a woodworker, so I would want to build myself a longboard rather than buy one. So yeah, trucks were £40, wood was about £25, £30, and the grip tape was about £10. So all in all, we're looking at about £80, somewhere between £75 and £90, depending on delivery costs and all of those things. I got the wood from Surrey Timbers, I got the trucks from Amazon, and I got the grip tape from an online store called Conflict Skates. 
I'll link all of those free websites down below. So I'll link down below to where I got the grip tape from, I'll link down below to where I got the trucks from, and of course where I got the wood from, which as I've just said, is Surrey Timbers. So all in all, really, really happy with how the boards turned out. If I would change anything, it might just be, I think I could have taken a bit more time around the edges of cutting the grip tape, but I've never cut grip tape before, so it's not too bad a job. It's just, it's a little bit rough around the edges, just on the top and the bottom. But the rest of it's got really, really neat edges, as you can see. There's no real imperfections in the grip tape. And it rides superbly well. Very stable and very easy to ride, especially for a beginner like myself. But all in all, really happy with the board, and I really, really enjoyed making it. So if you're interested in seeing how I built it, I'll leave that video down below. But that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope it's helped you. If you do end up making a longboard, please send me some photos on Instagram, or you can email me at designandmakeyt at gmail.com. That's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.